ago, while sitting at the infectious disease class, I realized for the first time HIV is not the only sexually transmitted disease. At that time, I was a 27-year-old girl who was migrated from Iran, and I was pursuing my PhD. Was I the only person who did not know anything about STDs? A couple months later, one of my friends, who was suffering from a very rare autoimmune disease, which was misdiagnosed with HIV for some years, called me and told me that she came up with the idea to raise awareness about sexually transmitted diseases in the Middle East and North Africa. The spark was there, and we just followed its signs. To make sure we are not the only people who are suffering, who do not know anything about STDs in our community, we started to search online, and we figured out every day one million people get infected with STDs. And specifically, in the Middle East and North Africa, there are 26 million people who are infected with the curable STDs. And it does not include herpes or HPV, the two most prevalent STDs worldwide. Back then, we were five grad students with one aim. We wanted to provide educational information for the people who may not have access to information about STDs or sexual health, either because, because of lack of education or the stigma associated with this topic. We started to translate some information from CDC up to date and other reliable sources that we knew and modified them to make them culturally appropriate for our target population, which were Farsi-speaking people all around the world. If you don't know, the native language of Iran, the country that I come from, is Persian or Farsi. And then, one year later, after that call, we launched our website, the first educational website about STDs and sexual health in Farsi. In the Control S website, people can educate themselves about the sexual health and STDs. Also, they can ask their question anonymously from our volunteer group of physicians. So, considering the fact that there is a stigma associated with the STDs in our community, we provided the most important feature of our website, which is letting people to ask their questions, and our volunteer physicians would answer their questions within 24 hours. And we used the social media channels, of course the popular ones in Iran, to promote the services that we provide. And it's amazing if you know that after two years since we started this service, our physicians answered more than 12,000 questions. And although we let people to stay anonymous, only 19% of the people who asked questions from us decided to not release their um, identity and contact information. Also, for providing a better and more focused services to our audience, we started to analyze the data that we got. And what we observed was a significant difference that we were seeing in the questions that are coming from females and males. Females usually ask us questions when they're experiencing symptoms or they, and they don't feel comfortable to see the physicians and they're afraid of to do that. On the other hand, males usually approach us when they have had sex, um, risky sexual behavior and they are really worried about their sexual health and they're wondering if they got infected with any form of um, STDs. We were providing true and comprehensive information about the sexual health and STDs in our website. But we were missing a very important group of people in Iran who did not have access to the internet. So our team members decided to go back home in Iran and then run some um, in-person workshops. To make that goal possible, we started to design some visually appealing educational material 
with the content that is um, appropriate for the people with different levels of the education. These workshops are meant to be interactive, and we talk about the signs and symptoms of the STDs, the available treatment, and most importantly, prevention methods. And at the very end of the workshops, people can ask questions from the midwife or the physician of our team. A couple months after we started running these workshops about the STDs in Iran, we figured out that we cannot ignore the overlap between the STDs, reproductive health, and child sexual abuse. And we came to that conclusion after getting many questions about basic concepts of the sexual health. Also, we heard lots of personal stories from the people who experienced child sexual abuse in their life. So we decided to expand our program and added two other series of workshops, the puberty or sexual health workshops and also the child sexual abuse prevention workshops. In the puberty or re reproductive health workshops, we run some workshops for the um, parents and also for the kids who may go through the puberty, who are going through the puberty, and let them know what are they should expect from this period of their time. And one thing that we were really, um, that was really important for us was that to make that um, puberty um, stage of life fun and let the people to enjoy this um, period, don't be afraid, don't be mad, and just, just enjoy the time that they are experiencing, enjoy the changes. But for the um, child sexual abuse workshops, we have different approach. We have two series of workshops for the adults and also for the children. During the adult workshops, we focus on the importance of knowing what, who are the potential abusers. We let uh, parents know that usually abusers are the people uh, who their parents trust and are very close to the children. We talk about the common scenarios that abusers use to get close to the children. What are the signs and symptoms that a child who has experienced child sexual abuse may um, show? And if they come across any person who are experiencing these problems, what they need to do, how to manage the situation to minimize the um, problem. And most importantly, we talk about the prevention methods. But for the children workshops, we have the different approach. We do not have any lecture style workshop, but what we do, we start with reading some books about how to say no, how to protect a private part, what is the difference between the good touch and bad touch. And then to emphasize the concepts that we talked about, we do some interactive games. We ask kids to identify the private parts and also we focus on the importance of protecting it. And one of, another game that we have in the workshop is that imp the importance of the personal space. Let them know that you have the right to protect yourself by having the personal space. And at the very end of the workshops, we encourage children to draw a picture to have the take-home message with them forever. Three years ago, when we started this program, we were five graduate students with no funding or support. And our aim was empowering the next generation. We heard so many no's, and it took a lot of effort to convince people to believe in our vision. But today, after three years, we are not alone anymore. We are expanding every day, and a really good group of young, educated people are joining us and put their heart in the work that we are doing. I believe there are not many people in this audience that can read Farsi or Persian, but this is a sample of the message that we receive every day from different people. 
a person got HPV vaccine, another one gets tested for the STDs, other person got treatment, a girl knew, uh, learned about our program, let uh, her partner know about it, and they decided to educate themselves through our website. And these are the things that are motivating us and then cause that we stay here and don't give up. And before leaving this stage, I want to ask every one of you to join us with your spark and let's have the revolution for the sexual health education. No one should left behind because of lack of education in her life. Thank you.